but, <laughs> but it's a little gift to you for everything that you have done for us, everything that you continue to do for us, and all of the ways that you have truly been the rock of this congregation for the last 15 years. So I think Bill deserves a round of applause. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, thank you. Um, I want to bring to you fall kickoff Sunday is coming up September 11th. Can you believe it? It's almost time to kick off for the new season here at St. Paul. And one of the themes, or the theme that we are using is called Come Together, Create Community. We, it's time for all of us to get back to church. It's time for all of us to return to the community that we have pledged to, that we are a part of, that lifts us up and builds us up. So let's do that on September 11th. We're going to have our normal worship service in the morning. Then we'll have outdoor activities. I was told the other day there's going to be some pretty good food there, and I don't want to release that yet until I know that for certain. But I was told there's going to be some pretty good food there. There's going to be games for the kids. There's going to be a bags tournament for the youth with a fantastic trophy that you can win, um, that sort of thing. So please get that on your calendar now that September 11th is our kickoff day and we want everyone to come together and be the community and create the community here at St. Paul. Um, I want to let you know that this month's food pantry is collecting those uh, staple items that we need for like health care, like um, shampoo and body wash and toothpaste, but we're also collecting laundry detergent and dish soap those are great items that folks need a lot of. We will take those in bulk if you want to bring them to us, or we will take your cash donation and we'll do the shopping for you. Cash donations you can do through your own Realm system, or if you want to go on our website and um, push on the button there that says Food Pantry, you can go right to that. Um, I want to let you know that Football Mania is available today. Football Mania, if some of you don't know, it is one of our major fundraisers here at St. Paul. And we call them fundraisers now because we all have a bunch of fun seeing who won the money every week. For a ticket that you purchase for $20, you get music downloads. And then throughout the entire football season, you get the chance to win 17 weeks in a row. And if you win, you make ex an extra $5 on your investment. That's the way that it goes, because the lowest amount you can win is $25. And you don't even have to do the work. The charity company does it all for us, and we just let you know if you have won. So I think Lynn is here today selling tickets for us. Please see Lynn if you want to purchase a ticket, or if you want to check out some numbers of tickets that you can sell to your friends and have them help us in our fundraiser this year. And then also I wanted to remind you that we do have coming up our new um, study for adults in the congregation. We're going to start with a book called Think on These Things. Or the, I'm sorry, the class is called Think on These Things. The book is called Misreading Scripture with Western Eyes. And so you want to pick up that book and be reading now if you want to join that class. That book is all about how we as people of the West tend to misinterpret the book that was written by people of color in the East. So we're going to come together, have a good discussion about that. Our first meeting is on September 13th at 7 o'clock. And if you want to be a part of that class, please let me know so that I can make sure that we've got enough adequate space requirements for everyone here as we are studying and learning together. I'm going to ask the guys, are we live? We're live. Woo! We are live. So our, um, if you are worshiping with us today on YouTube, please remember to text me so that we can say hello to you during Passing of the Peace. And our worship leader this morning is Carol. So please let us all join our hearts in worship this day. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's good to see so many faces. Mm. May this centering thought help us to listen for the spirit and find peace during our time of worship. Hear these words from Ziggy Marley. My dream is to live a good life and be loving, be close to God, and be a good human being, and bring peace to people. May the Holy One illuminate these words for us as we sing together our opening hymn, Community of Christ.
Please join me in the call to celebrate. Siblings in Christ, as we worship together today, let us set aside all of those things that occupy our thoughts and spirits, things that take our focus away from living in the midst of God's presence. Let us release those things after which we chase. Let us settle into God's presence among us. Let us take a deep breath and be reminded that all we need is present to us as God's gifts each day. Let us lean into God's centering presence this day, open to receiving the courage and strength to be the people of God. Please join in the communal prayer of invocation. Holy One, we come together to experience your presence as a community of faith and to offer you our worship. We pray to be settled in your spirit this day, letting go of all that keeps us searching after things which bring us little peace. Help us be transformed this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We come now to the time in our worship service when it is our time for passing of the peace. Here at St. Paul, we love that tradition because of the fact that it's our opportunity to share the peace of Christ that we feel within ourselves with one another. And so we get out of the pews and we shake hands, fist bump, elbow bump, whatever makes you feel comfortable, saying to one another, the peace of Christ be with you. And then also, if um, you are at home online with us, we encourage you to give yourself a hug and be reminded that peace is with you. But let us all now pass the peace of Christ amongst ourselves. Lori, peace be with you today. We're glad that you are here with us. Kathy, peace be with you, glad you're here. Lisa, peace be with you. We're glad that you're with us this day. Jan, peace be with you. We are glad you're here today. Suzanne, peace be with you. We are glad that you are here. Jill, peace be with you. Glad to know that you're with us today. Fred and Sue, peace be with you. We're glad that you're joining us today. Larry and Carlene, peace be with you. We're glad he that you are here today. Nancy, peace be with you. We're glad you're joining us today. Becky, peace be with you. We're glad that you are here with us today. And Lisa, we are glad that you are here with us today. Peace be with you. If I missed you because of our technical difficulties, we apologize for that. We are thankful for the fact that you are forgiving of our technical difficulties today. But if I did miss you, peace be with you. We're glad that you're joining us here today in worship. Let us all join together now in our response to our passing of the peace. if you are in sanctuary this morning. We've come to the time in our worship when it is our time for all of God's children. And if you're one of our younger ones here in sanctuary and you want to come down and listen to the lesson, that's great. If you're one of our younger ones at home and you want to come closer to the device your family is worshiping on, that's great too. But this is a time for all of God's children. So we should all listen, I think, a little bit. Come on down, guys. How are you? Good, 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 good. Are you girls over your cold? Are you feeling better? Yeah? Okay, I have a question for you. Does anybody like me? Well, 
I have to remember it because I don't do it on a regular basis now. But does anybody really dislike that line leader thing at school? Yes? I, I dislike that so much. You know why? Because they never, ever chose me to be line leader. I don't know if it's just, you know, the way I look, but it was the same thing on Romper Room. You guys don't know about that, but some of you guys out there do. Every single day that Romper Room was on, the lady would go, Romper Bumper Stomper Boo, tell me, tell me, tell me do, tell me Magic Mirror today, did all of my friends have fun at play? And then she would start rattling off names, and she never said Jana ever. I would sit in front of the television and I would wait for the lady to say Jana. And I would stand at school waiting for the teacher to say, Jana, come be the line leader. And I was never chosen as the line leader. And I grew up thinking, wow, I must not be really worth being that special in this world. I must not really be that special at all because they're happy for me not to wear the crown and wave the flag and prance everybody to recess and lunch. And I thought about that as I was preparing for this week, and I thought, it's taken me a long time to get over that. It's taken me a long time to remember that God says we're all special. It doesn't matter whether we lead the line or whether we bring up the back of the line. It doesn't matter whether or not somebody knows our name. It doesn't matter whether or not we become famous, or we become a famous singer, or even maybe a famous sports hero. God loves us all the same. So sitting here today, I am not famous. I am not a sports figure. And probably the lady with the mirror would not say my name even if she was still alive to do it. But you know what? I know that God loves me. And I know that God loves me just as much as God loves you and 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 you. And guess what else? God loves you and 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 you as much as God loves me. You see, we spend our lives trying to be first all the time. In fact, that's kind of the way we've built our system, is that we need to be first all the time. And that has caused us to forget that God has taught us that being first, being number one, being the line leader, being the one that always gets seen, is not as important as being someone who always loves who always gives, who always listens, who always accepts other people. First is not in God's vocabulary. Love is in God's vocabulary. And as long as we are loving one another, we're doing exactly what God asks us to do. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we forget sometimes that you have told us that first isn't important to you. What's important to you is that we love and that we give and that we accept one another. So we ask you to help us remember that. We ask that you would give us the grace to be loving and giving and accepting in this world. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for coming. Let's join together in our response to our time for all of God's children. Unlike the lady on Romper Room, I'm going to call Violet's name today because Violet is going to bring us two pieces of special music this morning. The first one is called Solfagetto. Solfagetto. Please enjoy Violet playing the piano for us this morning.
That was great, sweetie. Thank you, Violet. That was cool. We come now to the time in our worship service when we have the opportunity and the privilege to pray with one another. Before we do that, I I noticed as I sat down, um, quite a few more folks have joined us online this morning, so we are glad that you are here today. Thank you for being in worship together this morning, and peace be with all of you today. I do have a few things that I want to lift up um, this morning, especially that I would like you to pay attention to this week in your prayers. Um, The first one being that I did hear from um, Allison and her sister Elodie. Uh, Ellie is doing much better. She is progressing nicely, and they're very thankful for that. Um, I wanted to let you know that Connie um, Lopresti and her um, family lost her brother-in-law this week. Um, Her brother-in-law, Joe Mariano, passed away this week, so please keep the Mariano family in your prayers. I also want you to please lift up um, the Harkis family. They are friends of Steve and I from another church, and they lost um, their granddaughter this week, who was, I think, about 18 months old. So if you would please lift up the family of Darcy Harkis, we would really appreciate that. And then also, I wanted um, to ask you to please lift up Jennifer, who is Bill and Stephanie's daughter, who broke her wrist, much like Renee broke her wrist, except Jennifer was playing pickleball um, while she did that. So please lift up Jennifer in your prayers this week. And any of the prayers that you have on your hearts that you didn't um, have a chance to let me know about that we want to lift up today, please hold those in your heart during the time when Steve will play a musical interlude for us as the Holy Spirit will breathe those out during our time of silent reflection. But let's be in a time of prayer with one another. Holy One, 
We are thankful for this day and this chance to gather as your people. We are thankful that we have come together and we have been able to set aside in these moments those things that are weighing us down, those things that are causing us to worry and to have concern. We know, Lord, that in these moments, we come into that tradition that Jesus had of setting aside time to pray. And he prayed that they would all be one. We pray this day, Lord, that we would understand that, that we would understand that you love us all equally and that you bring us together into community to help you fling wide the doors of your kingdom here on earth. We realize, Lord, that you have asked us to pool together our gifts. We realize, Lord, that you remind us that not one is more important than another. We are all your beloved children. And in that, we have strength and the ability to join our gifts together to help your purposes in this world. We pray this day, Lord, with such great thanksgiving for Bill's presence among us here in church and for his birthday that he'll be passing this week. We thank you for that and ask that he is given so many more. We're thankful for everyone that is rising up to do such great work here at St. Paul, chipping in and doing everything they can to help us build a community here. We thank you for family visiting among us and being able to spend times together when we're deepening those family connections. We pray this morning for Karen and Ellie and Renee and Lisa and Jennifer to have the strength and healing that you know that they need. We pray for those who are struggling with chronic illnesses and for those who are fighting cancer. We especially pray this day for Nick as he continues to recover. We pray for those who are caring for their loved ones who are ill at this time. We pray for those who are dealing with mental illnesses. We pray for those who are fighting COVID and we pray for those, Lord, who are still homebound in this world. We ask that all of these folks know that our prayers are with them and our, that your presence is with them. We pray for our loved ones in care facilities. We're especially thinking of Janine and Tom and Steve and Marty and Ruth, and we ask that you lift them with your grace. We pray for those who are mourning this day, Lord, we pray for the family of Joe Mariano, and we pray for the family of Darcy Harkis, and we ask that you comfort them in only the way that you know how to comfort them, but give us the strength, Lord, to be your vessels of peace and comfort wherever we can. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are struggling with so many things this day, Lord, for those who are hungry, those who have no shelter, for those who are having trouble coping with life, for those who are angry, for those who are despairing, for those whom coping in this world has begun to become a burden for them. We pray that you would send your spirit to comfort them, but also that you would send your spirit to convict us to be able to help wherever we can. We pray for our world and its leaders. We are especially mindful this day, Lord, that war is in our world. We are aware so much so every day of the war between Ukraine and Russia, but there are wars everywhere, Lord. And we pray that there would be a ceasing to all war that ravages your world. We pray about the global climate change that is happening all around us, Lord, and we pray to know what we can do to help that slow down, to help that to change so that we might care for your Mother Earth. And we pray this day, Lord, for the victims of gun violence. And we ask to know how we can possibly make a difference there and stop that senseless killing. 
Lord, we are hoping this day to hear a new word from you. We are hoping that you will open our hearts and that you will remind us how to be your children working together in this world. We pray that you would help us to be more like Jesus, that you would strengthen us and give us courage each and every moment, reminding us that you have called us to serve you and one another in this world. We ask now that you hear us as we pray together his bold words that he continually teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now into a time of silent reflection, allowing the Holy Spirits to breathe out the prayers that are in your hearts and in your intentions as Steve brings us a musical interlude to listen to. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows Our reading today, which sounds a little intimidating, comes from the epistles, and it's James chapter 4, verses 7 through 17. Listen for the word of the Lord. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers and sisters. Whoever speaks evil against another or judges another speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. So who then are you to judge your neighbor? Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there doing business and making money. Yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wishes, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it commits sin. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Would you all please join me in a prayer? 
Gracious one, we are thankful for this day when we can come together and hear a portion of your word, your word that is given to us so that we might be different people. We pray that the Holy Spirit would move among us now and use this portion from James to remind us how we are to change and be transformed. We pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would help us to hear you. And I pray that I would get out of your way and simply be the vessel through which you speak as we go into this time of learning. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds would be acceptable to you, who is a rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this has been a day. I'm telling you, this has been a day because I printed the wrong prayer. <laughs> I came out here and I stood in front of you. I had the wrong prayer in front of me. So everybody, let's just take a deep breath. <sighs> Technical difficulties, no problem. Wrong prayer, no problem. Scripture from James, maybe a problem, yeah? Because that scripture from James, I wrestled all week long about whether or not I wanted to have it read today because it's a very convicting scripture that has come to us from James today. And I will be honest with you that it's the end portion of a very big portion in the book of James that is convicting us about what it truly means to be the people of God. So far we've heard from James that we want to set aside our anger. We want to find a way to deal with one another um, without anger. We want to find a way to deal with one another to, uh, without our partiality to, I like that person better than I like this person. We've heard from James that being God's people in this world is not going to be easy for us. And that's exactly why whoever wrote the book of James is saying things to us in this way that we need to know going into this, that this is not easy. And so as I wrestled with looking at this scripture this week, I couldn't help but start hearing the words of a poem in my head. It's a poem that is one of my favorites. It's from one of my favorite poems, poets, Mary Oliver. And I thought, what does this have to do with what James is saying. Why am I hearing what Mary Oliver has to say in relationship to this hard scripture that has come to us today? So I'm going to read that poem from Mary Oliver for you, and maybe you'll see where I'm going as I read this. The poem is called Messenger, and it's from her book of poems called Thirst. It goes like this. My work is loving the world. Here, the sunflowers. There, the hummingbird. Equal seekers of sweetness. Here, the quickening yeast. There, the blue plums. Here, the calm deep in the speckled sand. Are my boots old? Is my coat torn? Am I no longer young and still half perfect? Let me keep my mind on what matters, which is my work, which is mostly standing still and learning to be astonished. The Phoebe, the Delphinium, the sheep in the pasture, and the pasture, which is mostly rejoicing since all the ingredients are here, which is gratitude, to be given a mind and heart and these body clothes, a mouth with which to give shouts of joy to the moth and the wren, to the sleepy dug up clam, telling them all over and over how it is that we live forever. And as I read that poem, 
again to myself and read it again with James and read the poem and then read James again, I realized that what James is trying to warn us against in this particular portion of that letter is our desire, our need, our competition to be superior to be first in this world. James says you're filled with envy and arrogance, and all you want to do is be the ones who are superior. You speak against people. You are angry with them. You forget them. All you want to do is be first. Doesn't that sound like something that many of us in our own lives need to let go of? Always wanting to be the one who is first, I, when I told the children that story today about not ever being the line leader or not ever being seen in the ladies mirror on the television show of the 1970s, what I learned was, was that I needed to be first. I needed to be superior. I needed to be the one that everybody would say, look, isn't she so achieved? Doesn't she have such great accomplishments in her life? And for a very long time, I forgot what my work was, was to just stand and be astonished by all of the miracles that God has in our midst every day. I forgot that achievement doesn't make God love me. Being first doesn't make God love me. Being superior to everyone else doesn't make God love me. Do you know what makes God love me? just the fact that I am. Do you know what makes God love all of you? Just the fact that you are. And yet we live in a society, we live in a world, and it's not only just specific to the United States, we see this in other places of the world, but the United States, I think, has a really good case of teaching people that being first, being the strongest, being the best, being exceptional is what we are supposed to be going after all the time. If someone is not quite as strong as we think they should be, we declare them weak, which means then we are the superior ones to them because we see ourselves as being so strong. If someone does not want to work for the high-powered job that brings them hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, the right house, the right car, but neglects their children, we see them as the perfect life. And yet later, we see the damage that occurs when achievement takes the place in our lives of love. Never in my life Have I ever been with a person sitting at their bedside as they were preparing to transition over and heard them say, gosh, I wish I would have achieved more? They say things like, I hope such and such knows that I love them very much. They say things at the end like, I hope I have helped someone in this world. And yet for most of us sitting in this room and maybe most of us that are joining us online today, there's a long time between now and the end. So what is, as James says, your life? What is your life? James reminds us that we're here for such a brief time. We are but mist in the midst of everything that is happening in this world. What is your life? Is your life about being number one? Is your life about accomplishment? Is your life about being the one who is on top all the time? Or is your life about love? Is your life about giving Is your life about learning that you don't have to do anything for God to love you? Or is your life about being perfect? Is your life about being the one who is seen 
as the perfect example of what a human should be in this world. What is your life? Psychologists would tell us that when we are searching so desperately to be superior, when we are searching so desperately to reach number one, when we want to be seen as the one who is first, that what it truly is doing is it's sending out to the world this message that inside of ourselves we feel so inferior. We feel as if we are not worthy. We feel as if we do not have the love that we need. And do we not see that every day in our world where people are trying so hard to prove they are number one. Anybody been to a grocery store lately? I had to go to a grocery store the other day. I won't name which one it is, but it's one of our great big box ones. You could not get down an aisle because there were so many people pushing one another out of the way. My time is more important. Your cart's in my way. Get out of my way. You are in my way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. And I actually, while I was there, saw two ladies competing for who would get the spot in line first. Who would be the first one to dive at the line to be checked out at the store and get there and know they had won the competition? You see, we feel inside a lot of times like if we don't win, we are nothing. And James is saying that when we feel that way about ourselves, we take it out on others in this world. We project onto them. It's not a word that James may have known or the writer of James may have known, but James knew enough to have the wisdom to say, we do to others what we are feeling. And many times, what we are feeling is that deep desire to be known as the best, to be known as the strongest, to be known as the ones who are the, the most capable, the most perfect, the most well accomplished in this world. And yet all of that is coming from this stuff inside of us that wonders whether or not we are worthy, that wonders whether or not we truly are equal in God's sight with one another. You know, we talk a lot about the fact that Jesus said God loves us all, but we still doubt it. Yet I want to remind you that at this place, at this table, Jesus sat with ones who were trying to show their superiority. He sat and he fed the one who would deny him. He sat and he fed the one who would betray him. And he sat and he fed the other ten who would utterly abandon him knowing they were all equal at that table. This morning, as we come to receive at this table or take our elements here in our pews, wherever we are sitting, I am hoping and praying that what we're going to remember is what James taught us. We don't need superiority in this world. We don't need inferiority in this world because what we have is the love of God that teaches us and tells us and reminds us and proves to us over and over again that we are all God's beloved children. We don't need to act in ways in which we harm another to prove how important we are because God loves us just as much as God loves 
every other person in this world. So what is your life? What is your life? Is it going to be about achieving an accomplishment? Or is it going to be about loving and giving? Because I can tell you from experience there is only one way which will change this world. Amen. We're going to have another piece of special music this morning from Violet. I think I can pronounce this one. This one's called Sonatina. Please enjoy Violet's special music this morning. Thank you. Amen, Violet. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. We come now to the time in our worship service when it is our time to give our offerings and our pledges. 
in service of God's work among us in our midst. We are thankful for the ways that we are blessed here with folks giving so much of their time and their financial resources to try and help us become a community where everyone is welcome and where all are fed. As we go to this time of offering, we won't be passing plates here in the sanctuary, but you can go, whether you are here in sanctuary or online, you can go on your Realm account and you can make a donation that way, or you can use our website and go through it that way to find a way to make a donation, or we do have a box in the back if you would like to leave your offering there. But let us sing together our doxology for our offering, and then we'll come together in a communal prayer of dedication. that we have and all that we offer comes from a heart both frightened and free. Take what we bring now and give what we need. All done in God's name. You all please join me in the communal dedication of our offerings. Gracious one, we give these offerings out of our love for you, and because we believe you have called us to the work of sharing your love with this world, we pray that you will multiply these gifts so that our community can grow and expand in our mission. Call us to be generous givers each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we go into this time of communion, if you have your own elements that you have brought with you, or if you have those at home, this is a good time to bring those out. Or if you need um, elements that are pre-packaged, we have those in the back. Otherwise, you can come forward during our time of communion with a modified intinction here in our chancel area. But let's be about our sacrament this morning. As we approach the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is a good and right thing for us to let go of those ways where we have found ourselves embroiled in that need to feel superior, where we have forgotten about God's ways and gone our own way. In the Christian tradition, we call those sins. So I call you now into a time of confession. Please hold your personal confessions in your hearts, and we will come together in a corporate confession. Let's confess together. Gracious one, we confess that we are not entirely aligned with following your call in our lives. We confess that we become frightened by the idea of letting go and letting God because we fear losing control over deciding how our lives are to go. We confess that each moment we have is lived in your grace and in that forgetfulness, we begin to act in ways that harm ourselves and all your children. Forgive us, Lord, for trying to be gods unto ourselves. Forgive us and help us to trust in you more faithfully each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Even though we do fall short of the glory of God, hear this good news. We are all forgiven in Christ's love. Amen. Beloved of God, this is the table of our Lord, Jesus Christ, opened for us in love so that all may experience its life-giving transformation. Here, no one is a stranger. Here, everyone belongs. Here is where we find forgiveness, and in doing so, the strength to be forgiving. Here, the peace that passes all understanding settles upon us so that we can go forth with courage as Jesus' disciples. Here, we become a part of the communion of saints that have gone before us, and it is here that we become the foundation for those who will come after us. So it is then that we gather here to feel Christ's holy presence gracing this meal to be nourished by the bread of life, to receive the cup of compassion. Come, one and all, for all are welcome here at Christ's table.
Grace and peace be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. O God of our risen and living Savior, we praise you this day for the love with which you raised Jesus from the grave and in so doing gave to us the gift of everlasting life. Bless us therefore by your Holy Spirit so that we may ever offer to you our thanks and faith and that being united in Christ, we may be your faithful disciples. Amen. On the night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he took bread and breaking the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is to be broken for you. Each time you eat the bread together, do it in remembrance of me. And on that same night, he took a cup. And giving thanks over the cup, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out so that all sins will be forgiven. This is the cup of the covenant made in my blood. Each time you drink this cup together, do it in remembrance of me. Would you please all join me in consecrating the elements? Holy One, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of Christ's body. In the sharing of Christ's blood, we are all sealed in your covenant of love and forgiveness. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these common elements made from grain and grapes, and let them be for us the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with him, one with each other, and one in ministry to and for the world. Amen. Here at St. Paul, we practice what is called an open table, which means that everyone is invited to this table. You need not be a member here at St. Paul. This table is opened by the one who welcomes and accepts us all. If you have your own elements, or if you have the um, pre-made cups of elements, this is the time for you to partake of them or you may come forward and receive intinction. I will be serving the bread and Carol will be serving the cup. At the sides of the sanctuary, we have provided receptacles for you for your cups when you are finished with those. But let us all now partake of this gift of God's love for us in this meal of communion. Steve, play something. There it is. This means that Jesus loves you so much. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. So we have the same cup as we start this meal. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Father, this means that Jesus loves you so much. This is the body of Christ given for you. the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Leah, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Amen. Valerie, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Nancy, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Wendy, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Jenny, this 
it's just about as far as I can see. Would you all please join me in the communal prayer of thanksgiving for our meal? We thank you, Lord, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all of Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us go forth to serve you in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is one that is an oldie but a goodie. It is called, I Am Yours, O Lord. Let's stand and sing.
If you are in sanctuary, I invite you to be seated so that you can hear Renee's beautiful postlude for this morning. And I also wanted to remind you that downstairs we're going to be having cake and refreshments in honor of Bill Ressler today for his birthday this week. Please come down. And if you don't know Bill, spend a few moments getting to know him. He's a great guy to know in your life. Um, I also wanted to remind you, don't forget to get your, um, your Football Mania tickets while you're downstairs if you want a few of those. But here's where I want us to go out into this world with today. I want us to go out with that very tough question. What is your life? What it is in this world is so very, very important. And if you remember from what Carol read in that particular part of the book of James, James instructed us, draw nearer to God. Because the only way for us to truly know what our life is about is to draw near to the source of our being, who is the God of love, the God of peace, and the God of joy. So let us go forth this day in that promise that we never walk alone. Amen. Amen.